What you told me in the first interview I did with you mm -hmm. was that you had the intention of uploading that soundtrack oh, yeah. onto the internet. Yeah. Which I thought was really good because I thought, well, yeah. uh, actually, I thought, well, if he's prepared to do that after the show, mm. why didn't he do it before the show? So yeah. people could get interested in it and then more people would, would go to yeah. the, the exhibition. But anyway, you you said no, you were going to going to use it as part of the exhibition, which mm. was the main event. Yeah. And then you were prepared to make it available online yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And then I changed my mind about that. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> I decided that it was kind of like an ephemeral thing. That if you saw it in context, it might make some kind of sense. And just listening to someone walking to work isn't very exciting. So those files no longer exist. <laughs> so you've destroyed them. I've destroyed them. Yeah, they're. Uh, they're no longer in existence. But what you told me the second time we spoke at the beer festival yeah. was that you did have other work that was on the Internet Archive. Yeah, on the Internet Archive, on archive.org, I've got various bits of music and um, uh, sound recordings and bits of me wiring up various people, animal organs and vegetables <laughs> uh, yeah so I've got some stuff on there um, and just some experiments with things like music boxes and delays and so on I'll send you a link so you can include it in one of your later shows perhaps well yeah well could you tell could you, could you just say now what the, what the link is or how, how uh, well if you go to archive.org right. and do a search for Sufi boy that's F S U F I B O Y Sufi uh, boy yeah say um, that again that S U F I B O Y yeah Okay. And uh, anything there, it's probably going to be me. Some of them might be at the wrong speed, of course, because the bit rates were all messed up when they first uh, started letting you upload things. So I'd upload something and find out it was playing back at like twice as fast as it was supposed to. <laughs> and it's, and they've, they've fixed that now, so it just bit rate right automatically. But when they first started, it didn't. So there might be some older things on there that are at the wrong speed. But listen to them anyway, you won't know. <laughs> You might just go, wow, this is really upbeat. <laughs> and then you also said that you've got various aliases, which I should have realised if you've been done for fraud. If you <laughs> <laughs> well, the fraud thing was more a comment on um, how artists... An artist is someone who makes art. Who's an artist? Anyone who says they are. So, in theory, anyone can be an artist. So it, it's pretty much a big fraudulent <laughs> scheme, I think. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Okay. That's, that's kind of my take on it. Um, so how many aliases have you got on the Internet Archive? Um, probably only two, I think, on the Internet Archive. Uh, Sufi Boy and probably just my own name, Simon Egan. There'll be someone there under that. Um, though so I've also played with Children of the Drone, and there's lots of Children of the Drone stuff on archive.org. If you just do a Google search for Children of the Drone, it'll probably be one of the top hits. Or you can just go to the website, which is uh, childrenofthedrone.net, and there's links there to all the stuff on the Internet Archive. And there's hours and hours of stuff that's been downloaded tens of thousands of times by people as far as, like, Japan and Lithuania and Indonesia, India, all over the place. Um, it's a bit weird to think that someone in, a, like, a remote corner of the world is listening to me playing sitar or percussion or something. Uh, it just seems really odd. <laughs> but that's the beauty of the internet, you can reach all sorts of people. Sure. So how long, how long have you been doing that? How, how long ago was, was the first uh, music recordings well, uploaded? Well, I guess, uh, ooh, good question. So, probably one of the Children of the Drone ones would be the first ones, and we did those um, when I moved here about 1999, 2001, 2002, something like that. Would have been the first recordings were made when they were uploaded. I'd guess say probably around two thousand and three. So at that time, um, did you just sort of assume the internet was for sharing loads of stuff, and you just uploaded it and didn't worry about copyright well, or anything like that? Well, part of the children of the drone thing it was originally me, uh, Matthew Watkins, who's a mathematician who now lives in Canterbury, and Keith Hunter, who's a bass player and excellent all-round musician who works in Waterstones. Um, and we met at a thing called Strange Bedfellows, organised by a guy called Phil. Uh, and Phil 
uh, got us to all play together in different places. We just got a lot of odd musicians and we played in the museum and we played in Debenhams uh, and at the hospital and it was kind of quite strange wandering around and me, Keith and Matthew found we kind of could play together in a kind of improvised way and took it to the next level. Um, but part of that was we kind of all, certainly at that point, I got sick of being in normal bands where you have to go and rehearse and practice and there's all power struggles. So the fact there was no one writing songs meant there was no power struggles. One of us would play something and the others would play along. And eventually we kind of like magnetically attracted other musicians like percussionists and so on. Uh, and even DJs and all sorts of people collaborating with us. So there was no real membership. Uh, and part of that was kind of, out of that kind of evolved this idea of this kind of philosophy that anyone could do it. You could just, if you got together with a group of people and improvised right. and shared it for free, yeah. that kind of made your children of the drone. It didn't matter <laughs> whether we, any of us...